Republicans look bad. Joining me now, Tom Borelli, Newsmax insider and contributor at America's Voice News, and Rogan O'Hanley, the D.C. Drano conservative activist, joining us to discuss. Good to see you guys this Monday morning. Tom, we'll start with you. First, your reaction to this story from The New York Times. Well, Emma, I think we've seen this movie before and always ends badly for the New York Times and the fake news media and the Democrats. This was clearly a hit job against President Trump in an effort to make him look bad just before the election. What we do know is that intelligence never reached the president of the United States. And even more importantly, even if Russia was up to something, there has been no President Trump tougher on Russia than President Trump. Look at his energy agenda. His America First energy agenda made us the largest oil and natural gas producer in the world. And Rush, that hurts Russia because 70 percent of their economy about runs on exports of energy. That's why President Trump is really now tough and critical of Germany, because of all things, Germany wants to buy natural gas from Russia, not from the United States. So President Trump has been tr tough on Russia all along. This is the fake news media at it again. Source of it. It's coming from the New York Times. And Rogan, we know that the office of DNI has denied credibility for this as well. The president saying that clearly it was not a credible threat to be informed about it. How are you reading what happened? I'm reading it as fake news is trying to set Trump up uh, prior to the election as being soft on Russia to further bolster their now widely disproven claim that Trump is in bed with Russia. Uh, most Americans see through this. They trust the president a lot more than they trust the New York Times' anonymous sources. But uh, it just seems like this is another issue that they want to throw into the 20, uh, 2020 election to stir up some of that old Russia playbook and see if they still got some juice left in it. Yeah, as you mentioned, November election, we are getting closer. Uh, we have seen, obviously, just unprecedented things happen during this campaign cycle with the coronavirus happening, and we've seen how that's become political itself. I want to show you this video. Over the weekend, thousands of people gathering to celebrate pride. This was a scene in Chicago. And despite these mass gatherings, the media still blaming Trump supporters for the uptake in, uptick in coronavirus cases. Of course, we've seen some people not wanting to wear masks. And we did most recently see his rally in Tulsa. But look at the number of people coming out. They're not six feet apart. Tom, this isn't the first time that politics have played a role when it comes to media reporting on coronavirus cases. Is this just another example of the hypocrisy in news coverage? Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, this is just another double standard. Look, after the horrific uh, death of, of Mr. Floyd, look, look what happened. There were protests in Houston. There were protests all around the country. And look, there's a right to protest, but we didn't hear the media complain about this is going to be spreading the coronavirus. There's another huge protest that was in Brooklyn also because of Mr. Floyd. So this is definitely a, a double standard. And don't forget that even Governor Whitmer of Michigan and Governor Murphy of New Jersey, they participated in protest all along while they were punishing people who tried to open up businesses in their states. So again, it's a double standard and hypocrisy all over the place, Emma. Yeah, no pushback on these protests, no pushback on pride celebrations. And yet for days leading up to the Trump rally, so many news outlets were reporting the concerns surrounding coronavirus specifically that could be an outcome of the rally. Rogan? You know, it's really fascinating to me that Corona has the ability to discern whether or not you're a Trump supporter as to whether or not there's going to be an infection spike. Um, you know, there, there has been an uptick. I'm down here in Florida. There has been an uptick in cases uh, in states that opened up a little earlier. But what we're seeing and what the media is not reporting is that deaths continue to go down. And to me, this is a distraction from what Democrat governors in New York, New Jersey, Michigan, Pennsylvania did when they stuffed infected patients into nursing homes, driving deaths up drastically. Almost 50 percent of deaths were in five states run by Democrat governors. And they're trying to distract from that. So they're saying, look at this shiny object. We've got a lot of rising cases in these red states that did really well during the lockdowns. Uh, but when it comes down to it, deaths are decreasing. So, you know, no one death is too many. But, uh, you know, we are handling it well down here.
Yeah, you do have to look at all the data, of course, that being the number of cases, the hospitalization rate, and the death rate as well when you are considering the numbers that were given. Tom Borelli, Rogan O'Hanley, thanks for coming on today and sharing your thoughts. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Still ahead, several.